Hold on, Carlo, hold on. Tony, ah! So many shambas to shape. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard-working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need. So they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice. While learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on these journeys and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. So now, Tony, you see, as they were building the railway at the Savo, the workers are disappearing one by one. What was going on? The lions. They would wait when everything was quiet in the camp. And nobody, nobody was seen. And then they would creep slowly. And before you knew it, they would just grab one person. Uh, uh, <laughs> don't do that. Hey, what's that? Welcome to Shamba Shepherd. This week we are in Makindu in Makweni County. My name is Fib Wangangi. I've been doing farming for over 20 years. Now that we have a change in climate, I'm doing green grams, beans cowpeas and sorghum. I enjoy farming. I've grown up farming even when I was young. And so it is something I've done over years. I've gotten used to it. When I heard uh, that Shamba Shepa were to visit me in my farm, uh, I was a bit confused and excited at the same time. The Wangakis! Hello, yes. hello. How are you? I'm fine. Yes, hello. I'm fine. Ah. Yes. What is the name of this village, Phoebe? Ngokuni village. Ngokuni. Yes. Uh -huh. Is Ngokuni this hot? It's hot. Yes, it's usually hot. We are in the Merida area. Uh huh. Um, in County. Hey. Yes. Uh, and how do you manage to do farming in this kind of weather? Well, uh, we are doing farming using the modern um, technology, the smart agriculture technologies. Which is usually rain fed, but there are some uh, mechanisms and modalities we are using. Mr. Mongagi, have you seen any changes in the weather pattern in this area? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because previously we used to not doubt whether you're going to harvest. But nowadays you plant and you go to church and pray and tell God to do his part. Mm -hmm. Yes. <coughs> so you said you are, you are, you are doing climate smart agriculture. Yes. Well, well, that's great because that's what we are dealing with. Mm. So we are going to add in more expertise to what you have. Mm -hmm. And we, yes, and to make sure that you are shaped up. Yes. Oh. So, Caro? Ah, before we begin work, we normally have our base. We call it our unit base, the mm -hmm. tent. Mm -hmm. So we need to set it up mm -hmm. Then we'll join you in a bit. Thank yes. you. Are we allowed? Welcome. Yes, you're Everywhere allowed. we are allowed to move. Everywhere you're allowed. Anywhere you feel is good for you. Thank All you. Right. Yeah. Thank see you in a bit. All right. Let's see you in a bit. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. Uh, Beef cattle do well in dry regions, but if you can get a good dairy farm, then you can fetch a lot of money from the milk. My journey with cows has been challenging. I've always been yearning for a cow which will give me adequate milk for the family and also for sale. So we went for the indigenous or the local breeds, but somewhere on the way, I learned that you can improve your production of milk by bringing in a dairy cow. Baby! Uh -huh. I cannot. Hey! Thank you. Oh. Yes. It is too hot. Yes. I am thirsty. Mm -hmm. I am wondering if I'm feeling this way. What is the cow feeling? Could be feeling hot. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to prepare some food for it. So this is what you give the cow. Mm -hmm. What's this? Main leftovers mm -hmm. from the shamba. We chop it with a banger. Uh -huh. And then we give it to the cow. And it gives you enough milk. What I get is what I accept. Ah. Mm -hmm. But I know you want more. I would wish to have more. Let's see what we can do about that. All right? I'll do it back. Thank you. Phoebe wants to transition into dairy farming. But this is in an area that she does not have much experience with. 
this being a dry area, will this work? That is why we have brought in Mr. Muindi, the county agricultural officer, to start her off on her journey. So how many cows do you have? Other than this one, I have some other eight indigenous. Well, I've been keeping the cows for over three years now. What were your expectations? I was expecting to get milk from these local cows. Mm -hmm. But the one which I was supposed to get milk from, I think if I got a glass, I was lucky enough. <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing. <laughs> Mr. Mwindi, one glass of milk. Yeah. How, much, how many liters are you getting from the freezer? Yeah. I'm now getting at least three liters in the morning, three liters in the evening. That That's is six liters per six day. Six liters per day. All right. Yeah. Mr. Mwindi, is that, is that satisfactory? If you look at uh, the kind of animal we are talking about, mm -hmm. a Frisian, mm -hmm. they are known to give four or five times what, what? Uh -huh. So there is a lot of potential mm -hmm. that can assist her achieve. And Maybe win. Mr. Mwindi, if you could mm -hmm. tell us, uh, you, you've done inspection, yeah. what have you observed? If you look at uh, the body conformation, mm -hmm. it is very good for a dairy animal. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the coats, you know, for a dairy cow, they should be smooth, you know, very soft. Mm -hmm. They should not be coming off. Is that a sign of a deficiency? It could be a sign of a deficiency. To give you the kind of uh, shiny, attractive coat color that mm -hmm. you see, mm -hmm. you'll need to work on the nutrients it's getting. Mm -hmm. The kind of feed you have, mm -hmm. in terms of energy, mm -hmm. this animal may have difficulties mm -hmm. eating enough in a day. Mm -hmm. It is quite hard. Mm -hmm. Most likely the animal won't be able to chew it. There is a machine called a pulverizer mm -hmm. technology. Mm -hmm. It is very important on a dairy farm. Mm -hmm. It will make your work easier and then it will make the material easier for the animal to take in mm -hmm. and digest. Mm -hmm. Dry areas generally have dry feed. A pulverizer is a machine that shreds the dry feeds into small pieces that the animal can eat better. We normally recommend you mix the source of energy, mm -hmm. in this case the grass mm -hmm. and the maize stover, mm -hmm. with the cow peas. Mm -hmm. So you start by gathering the protein sources mm -hmm. that are available within your farm. Mm -hmm. We can add energy on the maize stove mm -hmm. by using molasses. Have you ever trained molasses? No. You can train molasses. Mm -hmm. Then we can make up for the protein mm -hmm. by mixing the stove mm -hmm. and the molasses mm -hmm. with urea. It is mm -hmm. called urea treatment of uh, fibrous feeds. Urea treatment is the process of adding a mild urea and molasses solution to dry feed to make it easier to eat and more digestible. The other thing, when you look at uh, the coat color, mm -hmm. I, I can see it is coated with say, some dung. Mm -hmm. Now that mm -hmm. as another risk mm -hmm. and this is called mastitis. <laughs> According to Mr. Muindi, the current shade will not do. As the rains are approaching, Phoebe will need a more permanent solution. So, he advised on how to use the older shade to create a zero grazing unit. With all the advice, it was time to transition Phoebe's cow to a better shade. Time for a shape up. Mr. Mongangi has brought in someone to fix the pulverizer he had. It is now fixed and the maize stalks can now be shredded. They were shredded and mixed with the cowpea remains. The cow was definitely enjoying the new meal. No matter what climatic region you are in, you need to understand the weather and how the weather forecast can help you with your farming. There you are, Phoebe. Yes, yes, yes. I welcome. knew I'd find you somewhere yes. very busy. Very busy. So what are you doing here? I'm tending to my nursery bed mm. where I planted uh, some vegetables. How do you manage to farm in this condition? Right now it's just too hot outside. Yes, it is. 
but uh, we have interacted with the agriculture officers and they've given us advice. Once you prepare your nursery bed, apply enough manure, that one will help them retain the water. And again, I placed my nursery bed in the greenhouse. Uh -huh. where we're having a microclimate fit for the growth of these uh, seedlings. You do know a lot. And you know what? There's someone who will find you very, very interesting and you can share knowledge with. All right? Would you like to meet him? Of course. Okay. Let's go. Let me take you to him. Thank Come you. on. The weather forecast which I receive in this area, uh, first we've been relying on the county meteorological department. They have been releasing monthly information about uh, the weather conditions, expected forecast. We went even up to weekly advices on weather forecast, and that one helped so much. Phoebe has proven to be a smart farmer and has really adapted to farming in this dry area. We have invited Paul Morage from the meteorological department to assess what she has done and build on her knowledge. This man, I think when you see him here, he knows so much about the rainfall distribution in this country. He's got all the records. What records don't you have about rainfall? Our first rainfall record uh -huh. is from Port Lace in Mombasa uh -huh. in the year 1882. And you have all those records? We have all those records. What do you do with all of them? We analyze and that's why we can be able to tell there is climate change. From 18? 82. I was two years old. Negative. Now, what have you observed yourself? The first thing I have realized is seen is a linkage. You have a weather station. So you should be included in the records of those weather observers. From the load, you have a sting load runoff. Mm -hmm. You have a water pump, which you have done so well. Mm -hmm. The situation bees, they are numerous of them, mm -hmm. and then the offer flow, you are directed into a farm. Mm -hmm. I have also seen that uh, you have adopted some part of your farm on conservation agriculture, mm -hmm. minimal tillage. Yes. Because of climate change, mm -hmm. you are talking about minimal soil disturbance. Mm -hmm. Tony, mm -hmm. she is worth emulating. You are impressed? She is a role model. So all these experience that you have mm -hmm. is because mm -hmm. you've been having experts coming to your shamba, yes. and you've been listening to them yes. and practicing what they tell you. Yes. So let's talk about the advantages of having the rain gauge in your shamba. Do you, how do you use it? So we record the rains every day. When the rains are on, we record them at 9 in the morning, every day. Yes. And here they are, the every time at 9. These are the records. Mm. From all this data, I can see you are recording so well that the list started on. But now, they added on 13th of December. Mm -hmm. So from 2nd to 13th of December, you only had 40 days of rainfall. Mm. 40 days. With the numerous consecutive dry days of 4 days. Mm -hmm. So you can see this, this is where the challenge comes from. What method of planting did you use? Okay, I used the ripline method. Ripping helps conserve soil moisture by allowing rainwater to go deep into the riplines and trapping it there for the crops to use. When you dig up the weeds, you open up the soil to sunlight, thereby losing the moisture in the soil. It is very important to plant in time. Dry planting is best for dry areas in order to make use of every available rain day. A difference of five to seven days can cause a failed crop. What were the results when it came to harvesting? Not even the harvesting itself, even the germination yes. was different. Mm -hmm. Because where we had the rip lines, the crop germinated faster and earlier than where we had the open ground. I would encourage my fellow farmers to take the advice from the agriculture uh, officers and practice it. Thank you very really? much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you Murage. Yeah. Thank you, Tony. All yeah. right. Thank you. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Weather and Farming News for Kenya. In the coming week, we expect no or very little rainfall across Kenya. North, Upper and Lower Eastern, including Mandera, Wajia, Isiolo, Meru, Taraka, Kitui and Makweni, will see very low rains of less than 5 mm across the week. Lower Garissa is the only part in this region that expects up to 50 mm of total rains. 
most of the coastal counties will get moderate to high levels of rains, ranging up to 75 millimeters across the week. This includes Lamu, Kilifi, Mombasa, and Kwale. Tana River will have lower total rains of below 15 millimeters in the week. Central Kenya counties such as Moranga, Nyeri and Laikipia, as well as Nairobi and Kiambu, will see very low rains of less than 5 mm, with an exception of Nyandarwa expecting up to 15 mm of rains across the week. The north, central and south Rift Valley will get little to moderate levels of rains of up to 50 mm. This cuts across Trukana, West Pokot, Transoia, Wasingishu, Samburu, Kericho, Nakuru to Narok. The western Nyanza regions will also get low to moderate levels of rains of up to 50 mm across the week. This spans across counties of Busia, Kakamega, Vihiga to Siaya, Kisumu, Nyamira, Kisi, and Miguri. Farmer, this is the time to preserve excess fodder such as napier as silage and boma roots as hay. Harvest them while green if you're making silage and while dry if you're making hay. This will allow you to keep feeding your cows when it gets dry and market prices for milk go up. Ensure you continue trapping rainwater from your roof and store in tanks. Keep mulching to keep moisture in the soil and stop weeds from growing. Use dry grass or dry leaves to mulch. Follow a spray program to protect your crops from fungal diseases like blight, which are likely to attack with the cold and rainy weather. For more tips and detailed forecasts for your area, get in touch with I Shamba. Call 0711-082-606. I am Brenda. See you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. <music>
where you have four rows of beans and you can do two rows of millet. And that way you widen the space and you reduce the competition for light and shading. We'll be able to demonstrate this with millet, beans and millet as the intercrop. Are you ready for uh, Boaz yes. to demonstrate to yes, us? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, I'm ready. Boaz. Yeah. Definitely. Show us. we go. Boaz started us off by making replines with the oxen. Reaping is a method of a climate smart agriculture where you only open up the areas where you want to plant the seed. And at the same time, that is the area that will be collecting water during the cropping period. Excellent! Let's start planting. The Nyota variety of beans does well in dry semi-arid areas as it is ready to harvest in only 70 days. To get the best results for the beans and to avoid too much shedding, plant four rows of beans and two rows of sorghum. This allows both crops to get enough sunshine. Use sprinkling method for the fertilizer. This works well since the fertilizer stays within the rip lines and is also faster. Mix this in with the soil and manure. Plant the sorghum and bean seeds and cover with some soil. Work on the chamber construction of the cow shed is going on. It's a lot of work, putting up walls and feeding troughs, and you get and so much more. Kamau is having a good time. Cooking with electricity doesn't need to be expensive. There are various cooking methods that you can use that will help you reduce on your energy bill. I am used to using firewood and charcoal. The challenges I'm having with firewood, there's a lot of smoke and also delay. If you want to do it very fast so that you can go somewhere else, you find that you are taking too long putting on the fire, also lighting the jiko, the chako jiko. It takes time. Phoebe! Yes, ah, There you are. I've been searching all over for you. I was here. Hey, in the kitchen, busy? Yes, trying to prepare some lunch. In, the, in, in this book? That's how we do it here. Uh -uh. I'm coming back. Wait. Before getting into using your electricity for cooking, you should first ensure that the wiring in the house is proper. To do this, we invited an electric technician, Mwale, to check on Phoebe's wiring. Mwale noticed a few things. The earthing cable needed cleaning, and the earth road, which had been built over, needed replacing. You must have clear access to the earth road. The fuse was missing. This is very dangerous, as if there's a fault, the power will not cut, and this may cause serious damage to appliances or even start a fire. The oven socket needed replacing, as it was faulty, causing the earth wire to melt. The color coding on the cables was also wrong. With the wiring checked and in good working order, it was time to call in Wairimo from KPLC. She's passionate about energy-saving methods of cooking. How do you make your food? Most of the cooking I do with charcoal and firewood. Charcoal and firewood? Yes. That's very ironical because you can see there's electricity. Yes, there is. There's even gas. Mm -hmm. But I rarely use it because of the expenses. The expenses. So if I'm warming something, I'm in a quick fix, that's when I use it. So with the global warming happening, mm -hmm. a lot is changing. Mm -hmm. So if we keep cutting all these trees, soon we are going to be left with nothing. Wairimo, do you have a solution? Yes, I do. A very nice solution. Wait until I bring it out. Mm. There's a wow. wow. Does this look like a solution to you? Wow. Is it the the the, the sephuria or the cooker? Or Is it? It looks like, like a TV. It, oh. it looks like a TV. Wow. What is this? Let's just hold it and see. My, it's true. It's so yeah. light. Uh, doesn't look like a cooker. 
Looks it like looks a like keyboard a, machine. A keyboard, a TV. So we're gonna. So we are out with the old. Out with the old. In with the new. Oh. Okay. Induction cooker. Very light, mm -hmm. portable. I see. And you just plug it in into a socket. Mm -hmm. The only thing is, because it's an induction cooker, you have to use stainless steel. Mm -hmm. That's why I have brought you also sufrias. Wow. So that uh, you can start cooking right away. Mm. This is so interesting. These are stainless steel. Mm -hmm. And they have to be flat so that the, the pan touches directly onto ah. the plate. One thing I don't understand, you are talking about induction. I thought it would be flame. No uh, open flame, so first uh, of all it's very safe. Uh -huh. An induction cooker uses magnetism to create heat. The inside of the cooker has a copper coil. When it is turned on, the copper coil creates a magnetic field which when put in contact with the steel on cooking pot hits the bottom of the cooking pot very quickly. They test it by cooking something quick. Each plate on the cooker works independently. Turn it on and adjust the temperature. The bananas started boiling immediately. When the pot is lifted, it automatically turns off. As the bananas cook, we fry the vegetables. It only takes 9 minutes to cook the vegetables and 10 minutes to cook the bananas. We used a total of 0.026 units of electricity. Calculated at 20 shillings, that is almost 52 cents for the entire meal. Very affordable for a meal. Enough for five people. Bon appetit. Sweet. Mm. Excellent. They enjoy the meal. Phoebe's dairy shed is done. And her cow now has a nice comfortable home. We have built a space for three cows as she grows her herd. Three resting spaces, three feeding spaces with a water trough. The roof is slanted to wash off dung as it rains. There is good drainage and a collection pit. Work on the shamba to prepare for planting has happened. And Phoebe has a modern way to prepare her meals now. Thank you, thank you so much. One thing, thank you so much to the whole team. Uh, we've worked tirelessly to complete this project. I'm so happy. Even for all the advice which has been given to me, I'll put it into practice mm -hmm. and bet. Yes. And uh, would you like us to visit again? Why not? Yes, you're welcome. You're welcome. Even when you're not again. on duty. I hear you. Yes. Anyway, other farmers also need us. Yes. So if you'll allow us, oh. yes. we'll need to also visit them yes. and impart the knowledge that we have. Yes. So for now, yes. we just have to say goodbye. Goodbye. goodbye.